The United States is due to hit its debt ceiling today, and President Barack Obama has warned there'll be dire consequences for the U.S. economy if an agreement to increase the federal debt level can't be reached. It's a key issue for our guest tonight, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Neil Wallen, who's on a fleeting visit to Australia. I spoke to him earlier this evening in Sydney. Secretary Neil Wallen, welcome to Late Line. Good to be here. If I could ask you first about your reaction to the arrest on sexual assault charges of the head of the IMF, Dominic Strauss-Kahn. Of course, he's been the very public face of this major international financial organisation. Well, we'll have to see what the facts are in this circumstance. Obviously, we have uh, a tremendous amount of confidence in the IMF's ability to do its, its mission, and we'll see how this other thing plays itself out. But uh, what's important is the IMF play its important role in the global economy, and we are very confident that it's fully capable of doing just that. Were you surprised? Well, I think, uh, you know, we all saw the news over the last uh, day, and again, we'll have to see uh, how that develops. Well, the uh, Republican Ron Paul says the incident demonstrates why the IMF has problems. He says it should be a wake-up call for an inquiry to, quote, find out why we shouldn't be sacrificing more sovereignty to an organisation like that and an individual like he was. How much damage could this do to the IMF at exactly the time that it needs to be able to devote all its attention to issues such as the European debt crisis? Well, again, Ali, I think the IMF's a big institution. It's one that we have a lot of confidence in uh, performing the functions that it has. Uh, and uh, I think that um, that's really the most important thing is that it is capable of, of continuing its work, and, and we think that it, it absolutely can do that. Well, if we can turn to issues that are closer to home for you, I guess this is something of a red-letter day for the U.S. It's the day when federal debt is scheduled to hit its legal maximum of 14.3 trillion U.S. dollars. Treasury says the country has got till August the 2nd. Until it's possible, you'll begin defaulting. In reality, though... Do you have that long? President Obama has issued some fairly dire warnings about what could happen with even a suggestion that you can't pay your debts. Well, we've uh, reached this uh, debt limit from time to time over the past uh, few decades, uh, and so I think uh, this is not uncharted territory for us. But as the President and Secretary Geithner have said, uh, it is important for Congress to extend the debt limit to make sure that America honors the commitments that it's previously entered into. To not do that, I think, would be unthinkable and would really uh, create real problems for the U.S. economy and our capacity to fund ourselves going forward. So we have confidence that the Congress will, as it always has in the past, increase the debt limit uh, as it needs to do. Uh, and we think that they should do that sooner than, than later. And both the President Obama and Secretary of the Treasury Geithner have been very clear that that's the right approach. Do you, I mean, when you say sooner rather than later, do you really have till August the 2nd? Well, you know, uh, at some point the markets are going to get concerned. For the moment, they understand that this is a thing that happens periodically. And so we do think it's important before uh, the markets start to react to make sure that we increase the debt limit. Uh, this is a, uh, a circumstance that we've seen before. Congress has already, always uh, raised the debt limit as necessary. We have confidence they will do it here, but we'd like not to wait to the last minute. We'd like them to do this sooner, not later. As you say, it's happened before, but I guess this time it's bigger than ever before. And also, in, in the past, it's always been the last minute, hasn't it? Well, you know, Congress has always understood that uh, uh, in the United States we need to honor the commitments that we've made and that we need to make sure that we have the capacity to uh, raise the, the, uh, the money to do that. Uh, I think they'll do that here, and uh, just as they have in the past, and we just need to make sure that they do it uh, as soon as possible. Well, of course, the Republicans are calling for trillions of dollars in spending cuts in return for raising the debt ceiling. As well, they've ruled out any increase in taxes. Uh, what, what's making you confidence, confident, or what are you basing your confidence that there'll be a re resolution? Well, the United States will work through its intermediate and longer-term fiscal issues. The President and the Republicans in Congress have both said this is something that is critical to do. We understand that this is something we need to do. In the meantime, we do need to raise our debt limit because it really relates to uh, commitments that the U.S. has made, both under Democrats and Republicans, Congress and Presidents past. And, you know, the, there's always a certain amount of, of political activity around these moments where we reach the debt limit. We've always been clear that in the United States we make good on our fiscal commitments and we pay the things that we uh, need to pay and that we are obligated to pay. And I think that's the 
basic thing that will happen here. In the end, Congress will raise the debt limit. I think it's interesting to note that even with the budget program that the Republicans in our House of Representatives have put forward, the debt limit would need to increase by $2 trillion over the next year. Everyone understands that needs to happen, and we believe that it will. Given your confidence, is there an element of chicken little in what President Obama has had to say in the last 24 hours? He's, he's talked about the catastrophic consequences for the financial mm -hmm. system of the U.S. and indeed global ramifications if the debt limit is not increased. I mean, is there an element of chicken little there for the benefit, I guess, of Congress? I think it's not so much chicken little, but I think it is something that presidents and secretaries of the Treasury have said, both Democrats and Republicans, including President Obama and Secretary Geithner, to make sure that the Congress understands just what the implications of not increasing the debt limit would be. We want to make sure we're clear about all the issues related to the debt limit, including the consequences, so that everyone understands that the, uh, the need is really there. Well, if we can look at economic growth in, in the U.S., uh, hiring has picked up, but, but not fast enough to bring down that unemployment rate that seems stuck around 9%. Has the recovery lost some momentum? No, I don't think so. I think we're moving through a, a nice recovery. We've added jobs for 14 straight months. Um, more than 2 million uh, people have been added to our payrolls. Uh, I think that um, uh, this is a recovery that has some headwinds that we're facing, obviously continued uh, difficulties in our housing markets and so forth, but consumer spending is starting to pick up, uh, business investment is picking up. I think you see across various sectors of the U.S. economy, whether it's uh, high tech or manufacturing or agriculture, quite a broad-based uh, recovery that will continue, we think, to build. The private forecasts are for 3 to 4 percent growth in the United States over the next two years. We think that's a, a good number, and we think that uh, we'll continue along that pace. If I can move closer to our region, you were scheduled to visit Pakistan earlier this year, but that was cancelled after the arrest of the US citizen Raymond Davis. You're clearly involved in decision-making regarding assistance to Islamabad. What happens now post bin Laden? Do you wind back the financial assistance? No, we're providing assistance to Pakistan. It's a relationship that I think our president, our secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, has have made clear is an important one for the United States. We have mutual objectives in the fight against global terrorism, uh, and we will continue to stay engaged with uh, the Pakistani government. Uh, and we have uh, online a, a range of, of aid to the Pakistanis, both uh, after their floods of this past year and, and in other regards, and I suspect that will continue. Do you see relations as having been damaged? Well, look, we have uh, a complicated set of relations with the Pakistanis, um, but we are uh, partners in the fight against terrorism, and we will uh, continue to find ways to cooperate and to engage, and I don't think that will be uh, in question. In the past, you've urged Pakistan to raise taxes, clearly with one eye on their reliance on foreign aid. Are they too reliant on foreign aid? Well, I think the Pakistani government itself has said very clearly that they would like to increase their revenues, uh, and they have tried and will continue to try in a range of ways. Um, and so that's an important objective that they've articulated for themselves, and we've tried to be of help to them as they seek to make sure that they have an adequate revenue stream to do the things that they want to do as a government. Well, of course, uh, in this region, China is the key player. Australia is very dependent on Chinese economic growth and the fortunes of the Chinese economy. What is your reading of where Beijing is heading? Well, I think that uh, uh, bilaterally the U.S. and, and uh, China have made important progress in our bilateral relationship. That's important for our respective economies, but also for the global economy because we're the two biggest economies in the world. Uh, the uh, Chinese, I think, have uh, begun to move from uh, an economy that is export-led to one that pays more attention to uh, domestic sources of growth, and we think that's an important element of making sure that uh, across the globe we have a, a sustainable, balanced path for growth uh, as we move forward. Do you see them continuing to grow at the rates that they have been growing? Well, I, you know, I, I, it's not for me to speak to or to make judgments about what the rate of growth will be in China. I think it is important, as I said, for their growth to be increasingly from domestic demand uh, in a more balanced way than it has been and less uh, dependent on, on export-led uh, sources of growth. I understand that you've played a role in advising Treasury Secret Secretary Geithner on Chinese currency concerns. And I note that at the last uh, strategic and economic dialogue session between the U.S. and China, China once again agreed with the direction of the yuan appreciation, but disagreed with the pace. Will there come a point when the U.S. will label China a currency manipulator? 
Well, look, the Chinese have made progress in the appreciation of the renminbi. Uh, we think that's important as part of this uh, sustainable balanced growth that uh, has been an important topic of conversation within the G20 and uh, as a multilateral matter and also bilaterally between us and the Chinese. We believe that the renminbi is uh, substantially undervalued still, and uh, as Secretary Geithner has said, we will continue to pay attention to the pace of, of appreciation of, of their currency. But not fast enough? Well, so far they've made uh, important progress, but as I say, uh, it is still substantially undervalued, and we will, we will be paying attention uh, to the pace of, of further efforts uh, as they go forward. Well, while you've been here, you've been pushing a regional Asia-Pacific trade agreement, the so-called Trans-Pacific Partnership. Why is that agreement so important, given that it leaves out quite a few key countries, uh, no Thailand, no Indonesia, no China, no Japan? Well, we think that uh, increasing... Uh, global trade is an important element of, of global growth. We think it's important for our own economy as we seek to increase our exports, and we think it's important uh, more broadly. And uh, there's a group of countries that are included for the moment that uh, have um, expressed interest in pursuing uh, this agreement, and we will continue along that along that path. Is it very much if there's no global agreement because of the failure of Doha, go regional? No, no, we're still very interested in making progress uh, on Doha, but this is, um, you know, one of a number of bilateral and multilateral uh, trade efforts on which we continue to seek to make progress. Secretary Weldon, many thanks for talking to Lifeline. Good to be here. Thank you.